Alright y'all, so if you see here, I am in my vehicle and I have mirrors turned on all the way. Lighting quality turned on all the way and I cannot see anything out of these mirrors. Uh, that's the first thing I want to see in GTA 6. Next thing I want to see is loud popping issues. Okay, there it is. So you can see like all the shadows. Like look at the shadow on the front left here. Disappear and then reappear. So there's an issue with the lot with the with the shadows. I mean, Don't you're driving really fast. It's happening. This is a game from 2011. Uh, but Forza Horizon 5 yeah, is having the stop, same right? exact issues. It's and it's not just, uh, it's like shadows popping in. This guy has a video about it, of course. It's I experienced it when I played this game on Game Pass. I don't have Game Pass anymore, so I can't show it in game. But this guy has it in game. Uh, this was a video from two years ago. I don't know if they fix it. But you can see like shadows popping in of all the ground clutter. All the ground clutter is there. It's just that the shadows are popping in. Watch this shadow right there pop in. I mean, you can predict when it's coming. Like, this is really green, now it's not. Show it again, one more time. Really green, now it's not. Now it's dark. The shadow popping is uh, is unreal. There so, is no LOD transitions or billboards. The trees retain the same quality as if they're being viewed up close. And the shadows do not no disappear pop. at long distances. There is no the loss in performance. In fact, we gained an extra five frames. So it is more performant than LODs. So yeah. Nanite not only so LODs are bad. I hope they figure out a way in GTA 6 to circumvent these LODs that are extremely noticeable, not only in game right now, but um, when you are when you are zooming down a highway, going uber fast. I love how the HUD can be hidden. As you see on your screen in front of you, everything's hidden except for the um, the mini map in the bottom left hand corner that my you know, face cam kind of hides. But um, what I would like to see is if there were GPS in cars. So that way I wouldn't have to have this um, immersion breaking uh, mini map on the bottom left hand side of my screen. So I love how the HUD can be hidden. I just wish there were more customization options and there was a way to have that GPS in your car. You know, if I were to have like a uh, little hit marker in the middle of my screen at all times, so the uh, so I would know exactly where middle of my screen is. That would be nice. So if I if I just want my ammo showing, if I just want my money showing, or if I just want to hit a little hotkey and then it turns on the HUD for a split second and then it turns it back off again. And oh oh yeah, also if it was in my phone, so if I didn't have to. <laughs> So I could look up the GPS on my phone, uh, and then it wouldn't when I was on foot. You know what I mean? So I would, so I wouldn't have to have the mini map in the bottom left hand corner. I would just have a GPS on my phone telling me where to go, and I would just be holding my phone as I'm walking or running wherever I need to be going. Um, or, better yet, if I had it in my phone. And then I just had my phone on, I had like a Bluetooth thing in my ear. My character had a Bluetooth thing in my ear, in its ear. And, uh, like it was Siri telling you, okay, turn left in 100 meters or something like that. You know what I mean? Or, and same thing with the GPS in the car. The in-game music during missions when it's just ambient music, where the music comes from nowhere, it's just the game using it for cinematic effect, that music is tied to the same audio channel as audio audio channel as the radio station so this knob changes my radio volume and the ambient music volume i would i want those two things separate in, the, in gta 6 there is currently one way that i've found to change the amount of npcs in the game and it crashes your game if you change it more than double. I wouldn't call this dense. I would not call this a dense uh, population of pedestrians or NPC NPCs. You know what I mean? It's midday. Nobody playing basketball. Nobody using the restroom or in line for a restroom. How many people are working out here? I see one. Yeah, there's this one guy right here to my right, working out. 
and then other people are taking pictures. There's just one person taking pictures. Beach. Does this beach look like that beach? Look how many pedestrians are sitting here in the water, like right at the edge of the edge of the water. Look how many people are in the water. Oh no, wait, those are birds flying over, but there are still people in the water. You can see. Look how many people are just right here. Is that what you see in this game? I mean, I guess there's a lot of towels and whatnot, but do you see one person on the towels? Like, there's some people walking down the beach, I guess. Is, there, is that a jet ski over there? Yeah, that's a jet ski, but nobody's on it. This is a game that released in 2013, or 2014, nine years ago. Interiors, which and this was the coolest shit I ever saw in any video game ever at the time. The um, this mechanic is a and it's this mechanic from AC Unity where you can enter through a window. Action. The given instructions for entering a window are to simply press the... And you could run through the window, out another window, out through a door, through another window. It's an interior. It's an interior you can run through. There are very little interiors in GTA 5. We need more interiors in GTA 6. Not just strip clubs, not just, you know, the player's home, but, like... There was a, there was a, in San Andreas, in GTA San Andreas, there was a scene where you, in, where you walked into a guy's apartment and robbed him. And they don't, I, do they have that in this game? Or interiors. I want to see more, more buildings that I can enter. I want to hit on and date the pedestrians as if they were actual characters in a game. Like they, like a Skyrim, like a role playing game. Like in Skyrim, you can date practically anybody, right? As long as they aren't already married, you know. Skyrim, you can do a lot of things. I want to do those things in GTA 5. Better HDR calibration. Okay, so this is an issue. There needs to be like a peak brightness setting uh, for HDR because HDR requires a peak brightness modifier. Unless, of course, the game bases its peak brightness modifier on your PC's settings just in the background. Um, but this brightness bar actually never reaches true black. There's always a little bit of grayness in it. Going more into settings, we need separate post FX settings. So like there's a graphic setting here that post FX, and this controls everything from like lens flares to bloom to, uh, to like motion blur to, uh, there's a motion blur strength thing there. There's, uh, what was it called? Vignette. Vignette, I think it's called. It's pronounced. But it's pretty much the aura around your character to where everything on the outside is darker and everything on the inside it doesn't have that dark hue on it. So it's more immersive or whatever it is. Make hideouts fast travel locations. Yeah, I'm tired of getting in my... I'm tired of seeing a mission, you know, back in Los Santos when I'm in the outskirts and not being able to just fast travel to my home. <laughs> you know what I mean? I guess I could call a taxi, get in the taxi, have the taxi fast travel me there, but that's just a whole bunch of stuff. If I'm in my car, I should be able to fast travel to my home. Even if I'm not in my car, I should be able to fast travel to my home, but I should bring be able to bring my car with me to that home if I'm in it. And if you haven't noticed already, I'm playing in a very extreme field of view. Uh, and that is due to a mod right here called Flawless Widescreen. Now this is for a whole bunch of different games, offline games only, because it uh, they don't know if you know um, you'll get banned for it. But pretty much what you're doing is you're just increasing the field of view past um, past where the game allows you to. So that's why I can get these insanely wide shots of both the Ferris wheel and. As you can see, I've removed all fog from the city through an add-on. Um, you can see how the in the distance there, you're starting to get artifacts of like uh, black, pretty much just black uh, noise is pretty much what it is. So if you've seen like a like snow on a TV, it's practically snow because it's so far away. I'm playing in 4K. I'm playing on MSA times four, maybe times five, maybe times eight. I'm four. Yeah. So this is what it typically would look like, I would think. Um, then, here's what it looks like without the fog. 
It's not like... Like, the fog adds distance. That's not there. Because that's not... I mean, that's without fog. It's not really that far away. The fog makes it look like you can't see the bottom of things, so it makes it look further away than it is, because you can't see where it touches the ground at. It makes it seem like it touches the ground further away than it does, but it doesn't. It's all right there. Well, in LA, there may be pollution like this, but I would be able to see this far if I were in the country. So yeah, that would be the final change I would make. Uh, thanks guys. Sub, like, subscribe. Let's hope GTA 6 is good.